everyone! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Architect Moira and for today's video, I am going to teach you how to study like a board exam passer. Oh my god! Ang tagal na since nag-video ako na parang ganito na sit down lang and finally, I have the time to film. I'm so excited to share these tips with you. So by the way, if you're new to this channel, hi! My name is Moira and I recently passed the board examinations for architecture last June 2022, a few months ago lang. So I I also documented the whole process of me studying for the board exam so if you want to check that out the link is down below I also made a video like this yung how to study like a uh, magna cum laude naman wow yabang yeah, talaga <laughs> um back when I was when I just graduated college so yeah I'll also link that down below if you want to watch it also pero for this video naman it's gonna be more specific for the board exams and even more specifically for the architecture licensure exam so anyways without further do let's just jump right into these tips and tricks Woo! For the first part, here are a few things that you can do before you start your review classes. The first tip is something that you can actually do college ka pa lang, ganun, and it's to save all your notes and quizzes from college. This is what I did as in, nakakompile na siya. Tada! It's in this notebook. This is actually my college notebook, ganun. Tapos yun, binayad ko lang sila all together. Ah! I think lucky na rin for me, sobrang coincidence or convenient lang, na I had a prof in UP who was also one my profs in the review center so like yung mga notes niya from before nagamit ko pa din sa review center kasi similar lang sila so sobrang um, mas madali para sa akin na mag recall pero yeah you could also use your own notes kapag may kailangan kang search or balikan ganun especially then yung mga quizzes when it comes to like structural or yung mga may computation pwede mo kasi silang gamitin pang practice sample problems ganun nakakatulong talaga next tip naman pwede nyo gawin habang nagbabakasyon ka or kapag weekend ganun <laughs> so it's a funny yung tip, pero it really helped me actually, and it's to play Assassin's Creed, specifically Origins and Odyssey. <laughs> so nilayo ko kasi siya nung pandemic. Yung setting kasi niya sa Origins is in Egypt and Odyssey is in Greece. So talagang yung mga iconic architectural structures nandun din. Alam mo talaga that it's inspired by the real architecture of those countries. As in, nandun yung mga pyramids of Giza, yung Sphinx, Parthenon, ganun. And even like with the yung temples doon sa Assassin's Creed Odyssey, yung layout niya is like literally how they design Greek temples talaga. So, parang natatandaan ko. Ah, okay. Dito sa Propylea, nandun kasi yung treasure. So, <laughs> dito yung ano na yun. Tapos, like, even sa origin sa Egypt, yung mga bahay nila dun is, like, um, na-capture nila na maliliit lang yung windows kapag sa Egypt kasi nga sobrang init ganun. So, yeah, ang galing. Parang okay din siya if you have photographic memory. <laughs> Tapos, masaya ka pa kasi naglalaro ko lang ng video game. Next tip naman is during your apprenticeship is to learn as much as you can. Very self-explanatory. Huwag kang mahiya na magtanong sa mga fellow architects mo kapag may hindi ka maintindihan. Tuturuan ka naman nila. Hindi naman sila nangangagat. <laughs> like ako, dati hindi ko alam kung ano yung term na Zocalo. Tapos yung pala yun yung mali it na ganun. Alam mo, hindi ko pa rin ma-explain. <laughs> Tapos, like, yung mga serio tiles, ganun. So, like, mga different terms talaga. Definitely ma-apply mo siya. Not just a board exam, but also in your future architect life. Next tip also during your apprenticeship is to log everything down. So, in architecture, yung nga required ka ng two years of apprenticeship and you have to write down all the number of hours that you spent on work and also what type of work that you did. I'll make a separate video all about that. Kung ano yung mga requirements and how to do the logbook thing kasi medyo nakakalito siya. My advice is that every day talaga, i-write mo kung ilang number of hours spent and more on like answering submittals or uh, doing a presentation, ganun. Log everything down talaga. Last tip is to enroll in a review center 6 to 8 months before the board exam and also if you can, go to the same review center as your friends kasi mas masaya yun. And you can also enroll in multiple review centers. Di naman yun pinagbabawalan. Ako, personally, how did I choose a review center? Ganito yun nangyari. Sabi sa akin ng college 
college BFF ko, Moira, nakapag-enroll ka na ba? Sabi ko, hindi pa. Sabi niya, tara, sama ka sa amin. Sabi ko, sige. Tapos yun na yun. <laughs> Kaya syempre, sinurch ko pa rin yung review center on te. Tapos parang, ah, okay. Mukhang okay naman to. E, Doon na naman lahat ng UP friends ko. So, parang, oh, okay na to. <laughs> Pero hindi ko alam na six months before pala, nagsastart ang review. As in, nagulat ako. Kala ko like three months before lang. Pero, ayun. So, dapat, if, for example, I took the board exam in June, November of the year before, naka-enroll na agad ako. Tapos nag-start kami ng classes ng January. And yun, you can also uh, enroll in multiple review centers Iba-iba kasi ang subjects yan. So, mayroong basic review, may design, may construction, tas may refresher. Pwede lahat yun sa isang review center lang like I did or pwede ding iba-iba kasi may ibang review centers then like na may expertise nila yung iba. Like yung iba sa yung design subjects sa iba sila nagaan. So, Ganun-ganun. <laughs> so, yeah, it's totally up to you kung ano sa tingin mo yung pinaka-best choice para sa'yo. Next are the things that you can do during your review season. First is to take at least a two-month leave from your work. Almost Almost every profession naman na nag board exam, pinapayagan na mag-leave for at least 2 to 3 months. Depende na lang sa company nyo. And I really, really advise na mag-leave ka talaga kasi medyo information overload talaga ang board exam. And ang hirap niya pagsabayin with work. Merong time din naman na pinagsabay ko yung work and review. And ang hirap niya, 8 to 6 is work. Tapos 6 to 10 is review. So mga 10 to 12 na lang yung free time ko. Tapos swerte ko pa nun kasi online lang kami. So at least nandito lang ako sa kwarto ko. Eh paano pa before na on-site. So so Sobrang nakakapagod talaga mag-review for the board exam. So, I really advise na mag-leave ka muna from work para lang mas makapag-focus ka. And others, they do resign from work before they take the board exam para mas makapag-focus din talaga. And if plan na rin nila um, after ng boards to move to a different company. Next is to be honest about your strengths and weaknesses when it comes to subjects. List down mo na lahat ng subjects na nasa board exam tapos i-rank mo na, okay, saan ba ako medyo magaling? Saan ba ako medyo kinukulang, ganun. And be honest about it. Ikaw lang naman makakakita. Para rin alam mo kung ano mas kailangan mong aralin. Which raises me to my third tip is to study your weak subject more but balance it out with something you like. Ang usual tip kasi is unahin mo daw kung saan ka nahihirapan. Which I agree. Ginawa ko din naman siya. Like for the first two weeks, ganun. Yung mga mas nahihirapan ako subjects yung ginawa ko. Kaso, yung nangyari din kasi, mas madali akong mabore kasi nga. Ano ba to? Ayoko na dito. So, what I did as a solution for myself is that okay, in the morning, aaralin ko kung ano yung mas nahihirapan ako pero in the afternoon, I'm gonna study something that I like. Para at least, medyo may excitement pa din na okay, kailangan ko lang tapusin tong mahirap na to para before ako makapunta dun sa subject na nagusto ko na mas madali para sa akin aralin. Para rin hindi ka nga mabore or ma-overwhelm. Next is to make a schedule, plan everything out even color code it. So, when I reviewed, gumawa ako ng sarili kong monthly calendars. Pinakita ko rin yun sa previous vlogs ko. And I really color coded like yung mga subjects ganun. Okay, parang schedule out ko. This day, ito yung aralin ko, blah, blah. Um, hanggang mapunta dun sa mock board exam. At least, meron ka ng guide. And yun nga, take note, it's just a guide. So, don't feel too bad kapag hindi mo natapos. Kasi nga, may days talaga na tatamarin ka. And that's fine. That's okay too. Basta, make sure that the next Day or the next few days, um, makakabawi ka naman. Now, these next tips are for like the studying part na talaga. The first one is to read your review notes, college notes or quizzes, and architectural books. So, very self-explanatory din na kailangan mo ba din talagang magbasa ng napakadami for the board exam. And when it comes to architectural books, here are my recommendations. These two books are by Max Fajardo. I'll link them down below. So, ito yung uh, simplified construction estimate. To be honest, hindi ko talaga to binasa. Um, yung binasa ko lang is yung last part because it has the construction terminologies. Kasi kailangan alam mo din yung mga Tagalog ng mga archi terms. This one, ito binasa ko din talaga because this is about design. So, nandito yung mga usual dimensions, ganun, mga distances. Very handy din talaga siya. Kaya nga handbook. <laughs> We also have the code, so I have the SPP, Standards of Professional Practice, and RA966 and PD1096. So, mga codes kailangan nyo talaga siya i-memorize or at least familiarize. Pinasa ko din talaga to, as in, 
Yan, nag-highlight sa ko. Ito, I recommend na kapag argi ka, kailangan talaga may copy ka nito. This last book is probably my favorite and most recommended and is The Visual Dictionary of Architecture. I'll link this down below as well. And ito talaga yung binasa ko like three times from cover to cover. Visual siya, so isabi may picture. So, mas madaling maintindihan yung ibang mga archi terms ganun. Tapos ginawan ko pa siya ng labels para mas madaling mag-refer. Recommend. Link down below. <laughs> Next tip is to make poster reviewers even fill your room with them, especially when it comes to codes and things that you normally forget. Yung mga codes na kailangan yun ding memory salaga is PD957, BP220, and BP344, kasi sila yung mga walang open notes sa board exam. Yung open notes na pwede is Rule 7 and 8 of the National Building Code, pero other than that, wala na. So, like, kailangan mo talaga ma memorize yung mga usual setbacks, ganun, kapag kapag by economic housing, ano yung setbacks kapag socialize, ganun. And also, things that you normally forget. Like ako, for example, like yung nakakalimutan kung ano ba yung usual size ng CHB. Hindi <laughs> ko alam kung bakit. So, ginawa ko, drinowing ko na siya. Tapos nilagay ko sa kwarto ko. Tapos na-memorize ko na siya agad-agad. Even like yung mga different column orders, ganun, tsaka yung mga different parts niya, i-drawing nyo na siya. Next is to masking tape, typical dimensions. So, ito din, parang maglalagay ka din sa room mo. So, for example, sa BP 344 kasi mayroong required na light switch height. So, nag-masking tape ako sa gilid ng light switch. Tapos nilagay ko doon. Parang mounting height. Uh, 922 1 to 20 mm. Ganon. Typical door height. 2.1 meters. Ganon. Tapos like yung iba, naglalagay pa nga sila kahit sa CR. Ganon. Like, okay, toilet distance from wall. Kailangan ganito. Ganyan. Yeah, madami talaga dimensions and numbers kapag arky. So, okay din. Para at least like in your everyday life, habang naglalakad ka lang sa bahay, nare-review mo pa din. Next, make or buy flash cards. I'm not really the flash card type of person nung high school or college ako, pero ngayon ng board exam, sabi ko, hindi, tatry ko na, gagawin ko lahat. I'm so grateful na may nagpadala sa akin before. Thank you, Smart Cards Ultimate. This is one of their decks. Meron pa akong iba dyan. This is the buildings around the world. So, sobrang nakakatulong siya. Kaya nyo, but your viewer na bibili na sa Shopee ngayon, I'll link this down below. So, at least kita mo na yung picture, yung pangalan, kung saan siya, yung architect na sa likod. O, diba? Sobrang convenient talaga. Especially when it comes to like pictures like this or yung mga quotes ganun, mga dictums and philosophies. Gawa kayo flashcards for that. Next, answer online quizzes. Maraming online quizzes dyan. Specifically made for the architecture board exam. Mayroong Facebook page. It's called Archational Plus Education. You can go to their page. Tapos, tignan yung mga albums doon kasi mayroon doon na pictures din or mga construction terms ganyan. Tapos, sobrang nakakatulong talaga siya for me. Mayroon ding other websites. Basta mag-search lang kayo online. Mayroon talaga. Pero, you also have to be careful or cautious kasi syempre not everything on the internet naman is correct so minsan kailangan mo din mag cross check ganyan just to make sure na hindi ka naluloko ng internet and when it comes to design problems it's really just practice makes perfect um, kung ano yung binigay sa inyo na sample problems sa review center nyo ulit ulitin nyo lang siyang sagutan hanggang sa hindi ka na nagkakamali or at least try it na hindi magkamali medyo ma tala talaga yung mga ibang design problems pero it's really just about pagsasanay sa sarili mo, reading comprehension din. You could also ask your friends from other review centers ng mga sample problems nila para mas marami ka variety, mas marami ka rin natututunan. Next is to have a group study session with your friends. Sobrang saya nito and sobrang nakakatulong talaga kasi lahat naman tayo iba-iba yung mga, yun nga, yung strengths and weaknesses and subjects. So, pwede kang magtanong sa isa't isa. So, like for me sa group of friends ko, isa sa amin, Hi Sarah is already a master plumber even before we took the our keyboard exam. So, mas alam na niya yung mga plumbing ganun. So, sa kanya kami nagtatanong kapag mga ganong types. Talagang mag-teamwork kayo para lahat kayo pumasa. Next, don't feel too bad about the mock exam. Just use it as your motivation. So, sa review center kasi namin, our mock exam was done a month before the actual board exam. So, at least kami, nagkaroon kami ng time din after the mock na parang, okay, titingnan ko kung ano yun. Saan ba ako nagkamali? Medyo madami. <laughs> so, I guess ito yung mga kailangan kong aralin ulit. But also, like, halos lahat naman bumabaksak ng mock board exams. It doesn't really have any bearing. And the last tip is to stop studying at least a day or two before the board exam because your mind also needs to rest para rin hindi ka ma-overwhelm. Ako, ginawa ko nag-stop ako the day before. Tapos sobrang 
kumalma ako. <laughs> Ganon. Two days before, skinim ko lahat ng notes ko. Na-overwhelm tuloy ako. Tapos the day before, tumigil na ako mag-aya. Tapos okay na ulit ako. Kaya ko na ulit. <laughs> and finally, for the last part of the video, these are just a few bonus tips, ganun, that are not necessarily related to studying, but these are things that I also did to prepare myself mentally, physically, emotionally for the board exam. So first is to take your rest days too. Kailangan din natin ng break paminsan-minsan. So try nyo at least once a week to not do anything related to the board exam or to studying or even work as in, lumabas kayo, punta kayo sa mall, ganun, window shopping kayo, or manood lang kayo ng Netflix the whole day, ganun. Kasi kailangan din naman natin as humans to recharge from time to time. Kasi kung hindi, mababurn out lang tayo, tas mapapagod, tas ma-overwhelm, and we don't want that when it comes to the board exam. Next is to meditate. This is something that I started doing nung nag two months leave na ako from work. Kasi ako, like nung college pa lang ako, every time iniisip ko yung board exam, sobrang kinakabahan na ako. So I knew I had to do something to ease my anxiety about the board exam. Kasi alam ko naman sa sarili ko na Hindi ko na mga kaya kong pumasa ng board exam, pero yung mas takot ko nun is what if matakot ako <laughs> during the board exam and kabahan, pangunahan ako ng kaba. Yun, I tried meditating. A link down below yung nawa ko meditation. It's a 10-minute guided meditation. I did that every day before I went to sleep. O ba 10 minutes lang every day yung kailangan nyo. Tapos sobrang kumalma talaga ako nung board exam dahil doon. Hindi ko talaga nakatulong siya kasi mas nakiklear out yung thoughts mo. And it helps make you believe in yourself too. Wow! Ganun. Kasi yung meditation na ginawa ko, para siyang manifesting din. So there's a part doon na magtatanong ka lang ng mga what if questions that only lead to positive answers. Tatanong ko sa sarili ko every night, what if pumasa ako ng board exam? What if hindi ako kabahan sa board exam? What if pagdating ng oath taking, sobrang ganda ng suot ko? What if next week architect na ako? Ganun. So, yun. Yung mga positive questions lang talaga yung tatanungin mo. And it helps na ma-excite ka din sa mga positive na pwede ding mangyari sa buhay mo. And last tip is to visit church and pray. Of of course, this tip is not for everyone, pero sabi kasi talaga nila, kapag board exams, dun talaga yung time, nakakapit ka kay Lord. And sobrang totoo siya. He also went to church. I went to Padre Pio and Santa Clara. Yung iba kay St. Jude pumupunta. Tapos mag din ng candle. mag kayo ng kandila, not just for you, but also for your friends. Tapos yun, pagdasal nyo din sila. I really found comfort in praying. Lagi naman ako nagdadasal. Pero meron din kasi siyang comfort na binibigay sa akin. Na alam ko naman hindi ako papabayaan ni Lord kahit anong mangyari. But guys, that is it for this video. Oh, diba? Natapos din tayo. Napakadaming tips. And I'll also make other videos talking about the board exam more in the next few weeks. Also, if you have any questions about the board exam, I'm gonna do a Q&A video. Yeah, if you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments below. But guys, that is it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe and also, don't forget to click on the notification bell so you're updated whenever I post a new video. Comment down below what video you want to see next, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!